Hey friends, welcome in. Harji here, back with another PC build. So the last two computers I did were uh, high-end rigs that uh, revolved around the 3950X, 2080Ti, a 9900K, and the 1080Ti. If you guys have not checked that out, I'll link those videos towards the end of this video. Now, today I will be building a mid-range gaming PC for a friend of mine who's upgrading from a four or five year old computer, I think. Um, yeah, his name is Manny. He is an actor, but also a gamer. And I'm gonna head over to his place right now to get everything set up so we can film and build everything. All right, so hop along for the ride and let's get started. Okay, so this is a gaming focused build and majority of the cost will go towards the graphics card in which I picked out the Founders Edition 2070 Super because it was the best price to performance card we could get as anything past that I felt would have had too much diminishing returns for what Manny wanted in casual 1080p gaming such as Valorant, Overwatch, and Call of Duty. The CPU will be the Ryzen 7 3700X as we wanted to shoot for a minimum of 8 cores with multi-threading capabilities so that he could do some photo and video editing as he does work on independent projects frequently. We also didn't really need an expensive motherboard but rather one that just had enough features to support a decent overclock and also stay somewhat relevant within the next 5 years with modest workflow. I chose the X570 MSI MPG Gaming Plus for three reasons. First was I wanted a motherboard that had a chipset fan that wasn't going to be completely blocked by the GPU once installed for thermal and acoustic purposes. Second was the fact that this board also supports PCIe 4.0 for future graphics cards that can better utilize it. Last was the attractive price point and color scheme as we were going for a black, white, and red theme. Next are the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro RAM. We only needed 16GB dual channel for gaming and some of the editing work I explained earlier. Originally, I wanted to give Manny the 3600MHz as Ryzen 3000 series does operate a bit better at this speed, but I didn't feel that the price jump was worth the performance boost from the 3200 he would be getting in his games and with the settings that he's playing on while we were trying to keep the build under 1500 US for quote unquote casual gaming. Now let me tell you, the Cooler Master 212 EVO is by far the best budget CPU air cooler you can get. I had this thing on an 8700K overclocked to 4.7 GHz in the past and it was able to keep it in the low 40s on idle, no higher than 75 on 1440p gaming, and no higher than 85 when doing intensive workloads like 4K editing on Adobe Premiere. For about 40 US dollars, I highly recommend this cooler for anyone on a budget. As for storage, we're putting in a 1TB Samsung 970 EVO. There's not much I can really say about this as this is a very popular and reliable fast SSD as I have used many of these in several builds in the past. We're coming up from a 10 plus year system upgrade and I don't think Manny has experienced an M.2 SSD before. He's in for a real treat. Then we got lucky and found the fully modular 80 plus gold RMX 850 watt power supply by Corsair for only 80 bucks, brand new sealed from someone who was selling on Facebook Marketplace. This thing normally costs around 160 in retail. For the case fans, we're going with some simple, reliable, and affordable AF120 Quiet Editions by Corsair. I've had these fans before in my 2015 PC build, and they are great options for any budget range builds if you don't want to spend extra money for crazy features like RGB. All of this is packed inside the compact Meshify C mid-tower case by Fractal Design. Okay, now let's build it.
All right, hope you enjoyed that. After the build, by the end of the day, I was losing sunlight and didn't have enough time to film everything I wanted, like overclocking, tweaking, benchmarking, and game tests. So I think we're just gonna do that another time off camera, um, as I do have other deadlines that I have to meet with other projects. One thing about filming a PC build video is that it's very time consuming. Like just building a computer can be as quick as, I don't know, like 10 minutes, not including installing the OS like Windows and updating drivers. But when you try to film the process, like try to get the sexiest angles, the smoothest motions, those 10 minutes can easily become five hours. Anyways, we got it done. I'm really tired. Uh, if you guys have any questions on anything that I missed, please comment down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe if you want to see more content from me, and as always, I'll see you in the next. Peace.